And here's the class of 1962. <laughs> the class of 1967. And a collection of golden uh, reunions, the classes of 70, 71, and 72. <laughs> All right. And as these golden ladies are seating, sitting down, I'd also like to welcome. Oh. All right. The class of 1952, who is already here. <laughs> and our grand dame, the class of 1947. Welcome, everyone. And you are, as soon as you're settled, you're welcome to be seated. Good morning, and welcome to Westbrook College and Westbrook Junior College Reunion 2022. Can you believe we made it? It is truly wonderful to be back here together in this special place. My name is Amy Nodzo Hale, and I am an assistant vice president um, here at the university. And on behalf of UNE, I am delighted to have this opportunity to celebrate with you and your classmates your time together on campus and how the essence of Westbrook remains a critical part of UNE's foundation. It has been a while since I've stood up here, and when I do, uh, it always brings to mind the Westbrook alma mater. And after 14 years, I confess that I still need to read the words in order to sing along. I know, I know, but the last part, that I know, the spirit of Westbrook will never, never die. I also remember the slightly more aggressive way that the second never also tends to come out, which stays with me. <laughs> and I think of that spirit in relation to all of the change that we have been through in the last few years and all of the ways that we needed to change the way we usually live. In our office, we needed to think about the true purpose of our work the events that we did, and the communications we had so we could have tried to achieve that. The purpose, not how we usually did them, but why we did them. That also happened with family gatherings and traditions. What was the purpose or the spirit of those celebrations? And as I look out at this group of people, and again, most particularly my friend Liz, celebrating her 75th reunion, I see people who know how to recognize purpose, who know how to hold on to the important things and know that no matter what it looks like or how it happens, the spirit of Westbrook will never, never die. Thank you so much for being here today. And I would now like to introduce Kathy Bascom Rich, the president of the Westbrook College Alumni Board of Directors for your annual meeting. Thank you, Amy. You didn't turn the pages. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Westbrook College reunion of 2022. It is so wonderful to see 
all of you here, and there's so much enthusiasm of all of you attending the reunion. Congratulations after two long years away, and welcome back. I would like to share with all of you how much life is being brought into this campus with our new students. If you ever get a chance to come back and visit the campus during the school year, I really encourage you to stop in. It will just amaze you. Listen to the students as they are walking around the campus and studying. It is so exciting as they hold this place very near and dear to their hearts, just as we did. It's just wonderful to see our legacy continue in this way. Before I start the business part of the meeting, I invite you to join me in a moment of silence in honor of our fellow alumni who have passed away since we were last together five years ago, but who are still with us today in spirit. Thank you. Our first order of business today is for the alumni body to ratify the newly nominated members of the Board of Directors. This year's slate includes Deborah Schmidt Shiloh of 69, Katherine Harper of 72, Rhonda Lake of 83, Carol Fredrickson of 60 and 87, Barbara O'Leary of 58 and 78, Julie Bartlett Nelson of 98. Do I have a motion to accept the nominees? Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion is carried. Congratulations to our new board members. I would like to take this time to thank the outgoing members of the alumni board. Gertrude Trudy DeRice DeFilippo, 60. Elizabeth Liz Clark Flaherty, 60. Donna Rowe Foley, 63. Brenda Malo Ferrioni, 71 and 81. Thank you for your service and dedication to Westbrook College and the University. Please join me in a round of applause for all these wonderful volunteers. It is also my pleasure to announce the new leadership of the Westbrook Alumni Association Board of Directors, as I am also in the group of terming out. Beth Bamford, 79, will serve as your next association president, and Carol Gray Williams, 72, will serve as vice president and president-elect. Congratulations to you both. With your enthusiasm and dedicated guidance, the Alumni Board will continue to carry on our college legacy and support UNE. Of course, we're always looking for new board members, and I encourage anyone who is interested to contact any of the members that you see here or speak directly with the alumni office staff. It is a very rewarding way to continue to be involved and participate in what is going on here today and carry through the traditions of yesterday. Our second order of business is to share some fundraising highlights. I am delighted to report that 144 Westbrook alumni made a gift in the annual Giving Day event in March, including one alum who provided a $15,000 challenge gift to inspire Westbrook alums to participate. Being a part of Giving Day is an exciting and important way for us to support the students of UNE. Thank you, everybody who gave. Another highlight is the growth of the Dean Richard Bond Memorial Scholarship. In 2018, a dedicated group of Westbrook philanthropists set out to create scholarships honoring Dean Bond, an integral leader of the Westbrook community from 1956 to 1980. I am pleased to share that our 157 individual gifts, we now honor Dean Bond's memory by supporting student each year with a fully endowed scholarship that stands at 41,700, uh, 272. Thank you to all of our donors, well done. At this time, I'd like to invite University of New England's President James Hebert to the podium to share some remarks with you.
Thank you so much, and welcome everyone. Because this is an especially challenging time for higher education. There's a lot of reasons for that. First of all, the demographics. So across our nation, in most parts of the nation, with a few exceptions like California, Texas, the number of high school students is graduating from high school is going down. And that's especially acute in the Midwest and in the Northeast, in New England in particular. And so what that means is there are fewer students going to college. And where is the, the biggest concentration of colleges in the nation? New England, exactly. So this puts a lot of pressure on colleges. Um, we're about to hit what's called the demographic cliff in 2025-26. And that's when, because of the financial crisis, people stop making as many babies. And so we're hitting this cliff where the, even though it's been going down every year, it's about to go down even more. What this means is that colleges, it's a, a hyper-competitive market for colleges to attract students, and you have to be better because everybody is essentially trying to steal market share from everybody else, if you will. And I'm very, in most of our competitive set just this year, last year to this year, they're down about 5%. So their enrollments are down about 5%. At UNE, we are getting ready this coming fall to enroll our largest class in history, in our history. So, so we are, we're, we're doing something at UNE that is attracting students to come and from Maine, certainly, from New England and increasingly beyond New England from the, uh, down the mid-Atlantic, and now we're actually attracting students especially for our marine programs from across the nation. And so UNE is becoming more of a destination at a time when most of the colleges, both public and private, that we compete with are actually losing students. So it's something to be very proud of. The pandemic obviously has created all kinds of challenges for us, but it's created opportunities, opportunities to think differently about the way we teach our students, about the way we engage with them, and just about the way we do business. And so my team, I've instructed them, and we're working together to think very creatively outside the box. How can we hang on to the innovations that we made to cope with the pandemic, the good ones, but then return to the way, you know, the traditional way of doing things where that makes sense as well. So it's both challenge but opportunity. The challenge, of course, has been on the workforce side. The, the overall workforce has shrunk, not just in higher education, but everywhere, which means that we have to do even more to make UNE a, a destination where people want to work so that we can compete in a very competitive market for workers. Everything from groundskeepers, all the way up to vice presidents um, is challenging, but we're in a good place in that regard. Another thing is the polar political and ideological polarization in our society and within higher ed in particular. This is something that we're tackling head on by promoting UNE as a place that celebrates the marketplace of ideas. Basically a place where we can have those hard conversations in a respectful, civil, and kind way. And it's very important that we marry those two things together. An openness to free expression, to talking openly about the things that you learned you know, way back when, don't talk about in polite company. You know, that's exactly the things we need to be talking about. That's what college is all about. But we need to do it in a respectful, civil way, which not many places are doing. So that's something that we're, we're um, addressing. And finally, just a general skepticism about higher education. Most of you all, I'm sure, it never occurred to you that higher education was nothing but a good thing, right? It, but nowadays, there's a lot of people that are skeptical. We have good, very solid data at UNE to show that our programs change lives, and they put our students on a completely different trajectory than they would have been on before. And so the value proposition of higher education has never, if you actually look at the data, it has never been better. If higher ed were a stock, you should all go invest in it because the value proposition has literally never been better. However, that goes against some of the narratives that are out there. And so it's on, incumbent upon me and my team to make the case for why higher education, especially at UNE, is a good thing. So 
We, one of the things I'm very, very proud of is during the pandemic, we did not lose momentum on our strategic plan. We have an ambitious strategic plan and we kept forging ahead full speed. Um, you know, sometimes my, my uh, professional staff and faculty would say, what are, what are you doing? Like, you know, let's take a break here. But, you know, there's no time to take a break. If we're going to excel and thrive in this hyper-competitive time, we, we can't take our foot off the gas. And so we didn't. And we made a lot of progress. The key mission embedded in our strategic plan is health. But it's not just what we think of normally as health, health of individuals. It's certainly health of individuals, but also health of communities and health of the entire planet. And so it's that broadened conception of health that ties all of the, the initiatives in our strategic plan together. We're also embracing diversity, but not merely diversity in the way most people think of it, which is racial and ethnic diversity. We're certainly doing that. In the time that I've been here, the number of students of color amongst our undergraduate population, for example, has more than doubled. So we certainly embrace diversity of all kinds but also diversity of socioeconomic diversity, for example, and ideological diversity, political diversity, d diversity across all dimensions. Um, I'm very proud to say that UNE now, um, approximately 30% of our undergraduate population consists of first-generation students. Students like myself, whose parents did not go to college, and they're first-generation students. These students need extra support to navigate their way through higher ed and onto a successful career, and we're doing that. And in fact, there's a really cool program that um, at the Maine Davis Scholars Program that takes students from high school students from island communities down east in the mid coast and down east who've never been to college, whose parents college wasn't even on the radar screen, and helps get them prepared for college. And if they go to one of three colleges that the, the Scholarship Foundation has decided, um, has, has had evidence that they really support very intentionally first generation students. They get complete, everything's paid for. Room, tuition, board, everything. And so there's six students in the inaugural class of for these Maine Davis scholars. And by the way, they went to every college and university in Maine to meet with the leadership to find out if they were gonna partner with them and they only chose one college to partner with in Maine, and that's us. And then they chose the, so they, and there's two colleges in Massachusetts, and we're the only ones in Maine. So of the inaugural class of six of these high school graduates who had to choose for the free scholarship to go to one of those three places, four of the six are choosing to come to UNE and will join us um, this fall. So, and a couple more things. Um, the Zipia, this is an online site that, that evaluates different colleges. They use Department of Education Statistics, federal statistics, Department of Ed, 10 years post-graduation to look at the proportion of students who are um, employed. And UNE ranks number one in the state of Maine for the fourth consecutive year. So this, this means that our students are actually getting good jobs. And, 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 and that statistic, by the way, that means we outrank not only the humane system, but Bowdoin, Bates, and Colby. So it's just something to be proud of. And another statistic that I often talk about, this one just always blows me away. You know, there's a lot of talk about student loans and the ability to pay back student loans these days. So at UNE, the, the national average and the main average parallels this for the default rate on student loans, meaning the people, the, the, the number of students who are not able to pay back their student loans and they default on them is between seven and 8%, okay? That's the national average. For the past several years at U, UNE, it's been 2.4%. And now this year, the latest data, 1.8%. So we are among the best in the nation in terms of our students being able to pay back their loans. And that's not because our students are coming from rich families and mommy and daddy can pay off the loans. It's because they're coming from solidly middle-class families, but they're, we're preparing them for good, well-paying jobs, which is allowing them to pay back their loans. So 
They, these are just a few of the outcomes. I, I, I can't resist telling you one more. In, in our health profession programs, we consistently have the highest board pass rates. If you're talking about nursing, if you're talking about medicine, dentistry, the, the highest board pass rates in the state, well above the national average. And for our College of Osteopathic Medicine, the, the residency match rate, the, the percentage of students who matched in the residency process, the national average is 92%. At UNE, this, our last data for the last round, 99.4%. So, um, so we're, in the healthcare space, we have now become by far Maine's primary provider of healthcare professionals. One in four healthcare professionals in the state of Maine is a UNE alum. Um, so we are, uh, we have a very deep footprint in that space. We're also, on, in addition to the health profession side, we're also developing the other parts of the university outside of health as we, we double down on our focus on health professions. And I mentioned already our marine programs. Those programs are booming, and we are now becoming the workforce provider for the marine industry in Maine and beyond. Um, there's also new programs we're always developing. This past year, we developed three new programs, um, undergraduate programs. We developed a minor in computer science, a major in criminology, and a major in special education. And every year, we're going to be adding new additional programs as we continue to grow. We, um, are, we, we continue to provide generous financial aid for our students. To, we're very committed to the access mission, to, to allowing students to be able to come to UNE. We call ourselves a private university with a public mission. The private part means that we can be much more agile than if we were in a big state system but we very much have a public mission to prepare our students for a lifetime of good employment. And we give over $40 million annually in scholarships to our students. Um, one thing that we did, a big accomplishment this past uh, couple of years, is revising our undergraduate curriculum to make it more flexible for our students and to update it. And any of you that have worked in academia, you know that the undergraduate curriculum is sort of like the sacred document. The faculty treat it as though it was etched on stones from Mount Sinai brought down and you can never touch it. And so it was a big undertaking to actually revise our curriculum, but it is gonna be so much better and provide so much more flexibility for the students, ensuring that they, they get the deep foundation in the liberal arts that they need, while they also then get the professional skills that they need and marrying those two things together, but in a flexible way so that students can easily do double majors, major minors, undergraduate, graduate programs together in an accelerated way. So I'm very pleased with this new curriculum. We're also expanding our College of Dental Medicine. Um, right now, construction is going on because we're the only dental medicine college in all of northern New England. And a project that I'm especially excited about is we are moving our College of Osteopathic Medicine from the Biddeford campus to the Portland campus. We're building a brand new, state-of-the-art, 110,000 square foot building to house the medical college, and we're moving it here. And what this is gonna allow us to do is this campus will then become our health sciences campus because all of the other health sciences programs, pharmacy, dentistry, nursing, all the allied health programs, they're already on this campus. By moving, by moving medicine here, this will allow this campus to be branded as our health sciences campus. And here's what's really cool about that. There is no other place in New England that has that concentration of diverse healthcare programs on a single footprint. If you go to Boston, Harvard, BU, Tufts, they have various health pro profession programs, but they're not all united on a single campus. What this is gonna allow us to do is to double down in our signature interprofessional training model. This is something we've become nationally known for, which is training students, not just in their deep disciplinary knowledge, but across disciplines to work together in a collaborative team. And so if they're all co-located here, it's really gonna allow us to do that. We're also gonna ensure, as we're building out the campus, that every health profession student gets deep training in telehealth with a particular focus on rural and aging populations. 
And so this is something I'm very proud of, marrying that interprofessional collaborative model with telehealth on a focus with rural and aging populations in particular. So amazing, really cool stuff going on. We have a capital campaign underway where we're raising money to help support the, this building and various scholarship programs for our students. The other thing I'd mention about this campus is that this is really our hub for community engagement. We do lots of things to engage the local community here on the Portland campus. And I'm just gonna mention a few of those. And any of you who are local, please join us for these kinds of events. We have our Center for Global Humanities. Once a month, we have, sometimes once every three weeks, we have lectures from leading scholars from not just in the area, but from across the United States and indeed across the world we bring in to talk about all, just any, any number of subjects. Um, we have, thanks to David Shaw, a iconic Maine entrepreneur, a generous gift from him, we've set up a Shaw Scholar um, uh, Innovation Program, and we have students doing incredibly innovating things, making new inventions um, and, and doing other kinds of innovation, and we showcase their work once a year, and it is an amazing event to see. Our oral health center um, provides free and reduced low-cost services to the community, dental services to the community. We have a center of excellence in health and aging that engages the senior population in the area for all kinds of things, volunteers for research, outreach programs, lectures, all kinds of engagement. We have our incredible art gallery here on the Portland campus, and the art gallery team is putting on exhibits that each time they put it on, it's featured in, in the local paper and beyond because they're really high quality programs. There's of course the Maine Women's Writers Collection right here, which is a real jewel at UNE, and it dates back to, well, a long time, to the days of Westbrook. And that's, visiting that collection is amazing. Finally, I just have to tell you about the, uh, an event that just happened here on campus I'm very proud of. I was talking earlier about the marine programs. We became, um, in my second year here, I signed us up to become part of a coalition called the University of the Arctic. You've probably heard that Maine is um, doing a lot in the so-called new blue economy, the, the ocean economy, with other North Atlantic partners. And at UNE, we wanted to be part of that. So we became part of this coalition, and this is a consortium of leading universities uh, across the world in the, the North Atlantic and the, the Northern climb. So universities from Scandinavia, Iceland, Greenland, Canada, they have had this, this consortium meets every year for a big conference. They had never met in the United States before. This year, they met for the first time in the United States at UNE, we were the host. And we met right here on this campus and we had various um, dignitaries in addition to presidents of all these universities and the highlight of the, well, the highlight for me was we took them all to the Biddeford campus and did a lobster bake right by the water because I love to eat. And so that was a highlight for me. But the real highlight was um, last weekend, a week ago today, as a matter of fact, we had um, Angus King, Senator King from Maine, um, sponsoring a panel discussion with the ambassador to the United States from Norway the ambassador to the U.S. from Greenland, um, and a couple of other ambassadors, and the senior State Department official dealing with Arctic affairs, a, a discussion about the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the impact that has on the Arctic Council and the global community to deal with Arctic issues. So it was, um, so you can see how UNE has grown up, that we're, we're featuring these ambassadors from across the world dealing with issues of such international importance. So I just want to conclude by saying how much I appreciate the involvement of our alumni, and the Westbrook alumni have been among the most involved and engaged of all of UNE's alumni and all our constituent groups, and I'm so grateful. Your, not only your support for our students, but your wisdom, the role models that you set for them are deeply, deeply appreciated. So thank you very much. You really set the standard for our students of today. And again, I want to congratulate Peggy, Joyce, and Ray. And thank you very much. And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Alicia. Alicia Faraday is our Vice President for Institutional Advancement. And Alicia had been at UNE for a couple of years when we, the former Vice President retired 
and we needed to hire a new one. So we did a major search and looked at talent from all over the country. I interviewed a bunch of people only to conclude that the best person for the job was right here internally at UNE. And I couldn't be more thrilled to have been working with Alicia. She's just been a wonderful partner and she works very hard, which is, which is good. That's, you know, she's like, this is how we, we do it. We don't, you know, don't, she doesn't get to sleep much. So anyway, without further ado, I pass it on to Alicia. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for that. That was, I will sleep in July. That's my, that's my motto. <laughs> after not much. No, not much. When I go on vacation. Um, we will now begin our award presentations. The first award presented today is the Tower Award of Alumni Achievement, the Westbrook College Alumni Association's highest award. It is presented by the Board of Directors and approved by the University of New England's Board of Trustees to alumni who have, who have distinguished themselves by a high level of performance in business or professional life, by services of unusual quality in civic activities, or by extraordinary, devoted, and loyal service to Westbrook College. This year's award winner is Margaret Grover Pinkham, class of 1970. Peggy, will you please join me on stage? I'm gonna read about her first. <laughs> After her graduation from Westbrook Junior College, Peggy worked as a registered nurse in various healthcare settings for 13 years. Peggy continued to grow with St. Andrew's Hospital and Healthcare, serving as Director of Health Education, Chief Nursing Officer, and finally President and CEO, before retiring in 2008. While at St. Andrew's Hospital in Booth Bay Harbor, she coordinated the construction and renovation of several facilities including St. Andrew's Village, the first comprehensive retirement community in Maine. She expanded and created new service lines directly serving the needs in the local community. In addition to her professional accomplishments, Peggy continues to serve her community in meaningful ways by providing consulting services to several organizations, including the Maine CDC, Office of Rural Health and Primary Care. Peggy now serves as the executive director of the Maine Rural Health Collaborative, collaborative, I practiced that word and I still got it wrong. <laughs> the well, the well. collaborative was established in 2015 to enhance healthcare services for down east and northern Maine communities. Peggy, we are thrilled to present you with the Tower Award for Alumni Achievement. Thank you. I didn't prepare any remarks, but as I was uh, sitting and listening to the remarks uh, already spoken, I got to tell you that my life since Westbrook, I have uh, crossed paths here. In Westbrook and UNE for a long time, I've hired physicians from UNE, I've hired professionals from UNE, uh, and uh, presently, the group that I'm working with, the Maine Rural Health Collaborative, we work to uh, place three of your PA students in uh, clinical rotations around uh, northern Maine in particular. My focus has always been northern, uh, excuse me, my focus has always been rural health. Uh, we do telehealth, uh, so I was glad to hear that. A lot of what you said, we've been working on. Um, I want to thank my husband for being here today. Uh, we've been married for 46 years. And I have our youngest son, Timothy, his wife, Alexandra. Uh, two of our four grandchildren are here. Um, Graham, who is five, and Henry, who just turned eight. So uh, I have a very, um, very supportive family. My other son, who is a lobsterman, by the way, uh, is uh, doing his work today and watching our oldest grandson at a lacrosse final game. And we do have a granddaughter, so we do throw girls in there every once in a while. 
Um, thank you all. Westbrook has really been a foundational place for me to um, evolve in my career. And uh, even though I'm not a great alum as far as participating in activities, it, um, it has certainly set my course in a healthcare profession. So thank you very much. The next award is the Heloise E. Withy, Withy 1940 Alumni Service Award, which recognizes the alumna who has done the most for the Alumni Association or in any way has shown extraordinary and loyal service to the college, university, or the community. This year's award winner is Joyce Swan Marshall, class of 1952, who is celebrating her 70th reunion. Will you please join me on stage? <laughs> Joyce earned her associate's degree from Westbrook Junior College, then worked at the college for Dr. Myron Hager, longtime director of admissions for Westbrook College. <laughs> she also worked in the front office of the Dental Hygiene Coleman Clinic, serving clients, instructors, and students alike. Over the years, Joyce has been highly involved with Westbrook, attending reunions on campus, connecting with classmates, providing updates and clever contents for publications, and giving generously to the annual fund. Joyce shares the same enthusiasm for her, her community by volunteering, including reading the local newspaper for the blind. We are th thrilled to present the Heloise E. Withy 1940 Alumni Service Award to Joyce. <laughs> of ironic. 70 years ago, I had a speech class down in the basement of this church. <laughs> I'm a slow learner and I don't remember a thing about it. But I just thought it was kind of funny because here I am at the podium on the main floor. So that was last uh, century. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here and very proud of being a a recipient of the Heloise E. Withy um, Alumni Support Award. And I'm also very proud to be here for my 70th reunion with the same hat. Okay, coming into this century a little bit more, um, a few years ago I had to give up high living, so I took up haiku. And haiku is Japanese poetry, very disciplined. It consists of three lines. The first line has five syllables. The second line, I mean, five syllables. The second line has seven syllables. And the third line has five syllables. And I have composed two uh, for this occasion and a little haiku hiccup, which I'll add at the end. I'll tell you very frankly, it's much easier to write and to read haiku poetry than it is to speak. <laughs> but I'm going to speak this one. Westbrook Jr. scene of friends, fun, and steady years birthed strong loyalty. 70 years pass, and we are now UNA with deep Westbrook roots. And then my little hiccup. Wonderful, happy memories impel my strong Westbrook Junior College um, loyalty. And I pledge my respect for the University of New England. Thank you.
Our last award is the Honorary Alumni Award, which is given to an individual who has shown high interest and given substantial service to the Westbrook College Alumni Association. I am pleased to present this recognition to Ray Handy. Ray, would you join me on stage? Ray Handy is Associate Dean of Students for Graduate and Professional Student Affairs, that is a tongue twister, <laughs> at the University of New England. In his 25th year on the Portland campus, Ray serves students across four colleges. Working with academic and student support units, he has played a key role in, in the strategic growth and development of the campus and the delivery of essential support services to graduate and professional learners. Ray attended Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts, where he earned his bachelor's, master's of science, and certificate of advanced graduate study degrees. In his 40 years of higher educational experience, Ray has served in various capacities within student affairs, including director of student activities, campus center, director of housing and residence life, director of campus life, director of orientation and leadership, and as assistant and associate dean of students. He has also taught student leadership seminars, first year experience, and senior capstone courses. We so admire Ray's years of service to UNE students. His achievements and contributions truly continue the spirit and values of Westbrook College. Ray, we are honored to present you with the Honorary Alumni Award. I do have a couple of words. This is uh, highly unusual because in my experience, I'm usually the individual that's preparing all of these types of ceremonies and running around and presenting awards and making sure everything is great. So this is quite the honor to be up here. I'm very humbled by it and uh, certainly privileged to stand in good company with the other awardees today. Uh, I'd like to thank the Alumni Association, uh, certainly Catherine Boscom rich uh, and anyone else who had a hand in this. I, uh, again, very much appreciate it. Um, this is my 26th year, actually. I'm into that now at the University of New England. Um, I have always been a part of the Westbrook College campus, the Portland campus, and I can say it's been nothing but a pleasure. Um, I enjoy this campus immensely and I enjoy the students that are here. They are so rich in what it is that they do, they offer, and in their education. Um, I do have a connection to Westbrook College in a sense prior, I should say, as, as I joined the university, my wife Julie, um, and uh, she was here as a Westbrook College employee in the admissions office for several years. She later went on to work in the uh, University of New England in the IT office on things. So thank you, Julie, and thank you, Elise, for a lot of uh, uh, early mornings, late nights, and lost weekends. <laughs> um, I'll say that uh, I arrived in 1997, and certainly at that time, that was the first year that the University of New England's policies and different things went into place uh, from Westbrook College. Uh, as you can imagine, it was a pretty challenging uh, time filled with anxiety, particularly for our students that were here, but also for the alum and for those other individuals that invested so much into Westbrook College and felt that that spirit would be lost. Um, my office originally was uh, on the first floor of Hersey across, uh, or the first floor of Hersey before the renovation took place. Um, in Margaret Watson's old office. If uh, many of you perhaps knew her, if you sat in your office, her office, maybe you shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> uh, I came to know her, get to know her over the course of a couple of years, and she was an outstanding woman, and I learned a lot about Westbrook College. Also on that same floor in Hersey Hall uh, was the president's office. And at that time of the transition was Dr. Sandra Featherman. She would come to campus once or twice a week and would always make it a point to come into the office, sit down. We chatted about a variety of things. I think partly because we were the only offices on the floor at that time. Ginny Ketch in admissions was at the far end of the hall. 
Uh, but we talked about a number of things, but without a doubt, it always boiled back to Westbrook College. And some folks may find this to be a bit of a surprise. Um, the one thing that she said, and I, I wrote it down, uh, uh, on many occasions, certainly I was reminded that while UNE now took over or works with the physical space and the programs of what was Westbrook College, that we can't forget the spirit and the people and the legacy and what the foundation of Westbrook College was, and that was the education of students. And so today, certainly you walk around campus and there's been so many changes that have happened at the University of New England, and certainly this campus is not alone with those changes, but when I stand outside, I still see the historic green, the historic buildings. We still recognize the Deb Morton Awards. The Maroon Award is still a part of the Westbrook College of Health Professions every year. Uh, Blewett Hall, nursing, dental hygiene, the dental hygiene clinic are all here. I think they've all been enhanced. And I think the one thing that is certain is that that spirit has not died from Westbrook College and that it continues. And the foundation of education, which is the basis, has only grown stronger. And part of those changes, as I finish up here, the changes that have taken place uh, on campus have only served to strengthen uh, the education for the students that, that do come here. And if there's one thing that has definitely changed throughout the years that I've been here, and I think is a, a, a huge advantage and benefit, uh, are the students on this campus. As we've transitioned from the undergraduate community to a graduate and professional community, uh, it is fascinating to sit and to listen and to work with these students. Uh, they're smart, they come from all over the country, and uh, we're very fortunate to have them pass through our doors and be educated and be able to move on as health professionals. And I agree earlier with the comments, if you have an opportunity, sit and talk to them because they are amazing. Um, so I, I just wanted to say that, point that out, and it's been an honor and a privilege to certainly serve uh, the UNE community, ultimately the Westbrook College community, the Westbrook Junior College community. Um, we still have those pieces that are wrapped into things, and I hope you have a chance to explore campus as you look at several buildings, Innovation Hall, Alumni Hall, the library, uh, Alexander Hall and Wing Lounge and the Nor'easter Cafe, the pictures, the history that are still on the walls to remind the students of where they, this campus has come from, uh, I think is all very important. So it has been a privilege and I thank you all for this honor. Appreciate it. Congratulations. And Kathy, I think you're, you're closing this out. Everybody could rise, please. Sing it loud and proud, ladies. Wait, 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 wait. You have words to say first. Oh, I have words to say. Sorry. You have words to say first. Oh. On, the, on the reverse of your program. No one told me this. Thank you, Ray. It is an honor to recognize. Sorry. 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 It is an honor to recognize all the different people who represent the spirit of Westbrook. I hope you enjoy your time on campus today and take advantage of the various tours, the spa services that are happening this afternoon. Lunch will be served in Alexander Hall after the ceremony. Uh, looking forward to seeing all of you there. And this evening there will also be an annual reunion banquet in Innovation Hall with some after dinner entertainment, which I hear sounds very interesting. We hope you plan to attend. So to close the 2022 annual meeting, please stand and join in singing of our alma mater, which is listed on the back of your program. Okay. Westbrook School.